Hi everyone, it is September 12, 2018. This is your Hurricane Florence update. And I, I'm going to start with a video that I just took. Our skies are loaded. All cloud. Anderson, South Carolina. Upstate South Carolina. And I actually thought that I was going to uh, escape with maybe just some winds and some rain, but it doesn't look like it now. All right, that's our sky. Completely and utterly a horizon to horizon cloud. This is Pacific Redwood, one Pacific Redwood. And we're looking at uh, Hurricane Florence in the Atlantic. Uh, interesting features today. We see some blast patterns right here on the uh, western side and also the uh, north uh, eastern side. And uh, the storm looks rather lopsided, and that's because there's some manipulation going on right here. We see some uh, clockwise rotation right in this area. And also, right down here, we see some a lot of evaporation right in this area, this very blue area, fills out towards the end of the loop. And that is changing the course, the direction of this storm. And that's why this storm has a flat spot, sort of a, a, a little bit of a flat spot. And it's lopsided. We see a lot of water vapor out on this side, but not much over on this side, on the south side. And that's because of manipulation occurring. We see high pressure being installed. We have the clockwise rotation right here. We can see some partial clockwise rotation right there. And so this is changing the direction of Hurricane Florence. So we know the technology exists to destroy this hurricane and protect um, all life from the beating that we will be getting. They're not stopping it. They're not diminishing it. They're not destroying it. They're letting it happen. Does it matter if we find out that mainstream media is lying about this being a hurricane? that it may just be a tropical storm? No, it really doesn't because they can bring about the destruction even though reality is that the winds that we've been showing are not the winds that mainstream media is reporting. Now, how many how many Hurricane Harvey, how many said there was hardly any wind? It didn't matter. It didn't matter that it wasn't a hurricane. They drenched. They destroyed Houston with flooding. And they're going, I believe, they're going to be doing the same thing to South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia. But I want to bring your attention to some articles that were sent to me by a subscriber who I want to thank for sending these articles along. Interesting. Zombie trees invade Houston landscape. These zombie trees are all over the country and they're all over North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia, Georgia, right where this hurricane is going to be hitting. Now, that's an oak tree. Doesn't look very healthy, does it? This is what the oak trees look like here in Anderson, South Carolina, but these arborists in Houston are claiming that these trees, because they were sitting in water for days, that's why they have all of the fungal disease on them. That's why they're dying from the inside out. That's why they're unable to produce the leaves, the big leaves. They have little tiny leaves. You can see right through them. 
it's not just Houston. This is caused by the Wi-Fi, the saturation of these very dangerous frequencies, and the geoengineering. But I found it interesting. This article, authorities warn of zombie trees this hurricane season. So it's not just zombie trees in Houston. Zombie trees, this comes out of Orlando, Florida. Authorities have issued a warning about zombie trees in your neighborhood, saying they could fall over at any time. The trees appear to be alive on the outside, but are dead on the inside. Great. All right. That's exactly what I was saying in my video that I posted a couple of days ago showing you the trees here in Anderson, South Carolina. And I said, it doesn't take much because the trees are dying from the inside out. And I've shown on Kafka Winston World when we've had, you know, storms that were not hurricanes, not tropical storms, just regular rainstorms and trees were falling all over the place in Anderson. And I filmed this huge tree that just toppled down and I showed inside it was hollow. That's what's happening to these trees. These trees are incredibly weak and we've got trees that line streets with power lines. So uh, mainstream media is claiming that we could be looking at power outages for weeks. This is the GIF um, tracking of this storm. And as you can see, it will be plowing into North Carolina, South Carolina, and on into Georgia. So you guys in Georgia, especially Savannah, this hurricane apparently is going to be hitting North Carolina, sitting there for a day. Then, same strength, hitting South Carolina, turning south to hit South Carolina, sitting there for a day, and then making its way to Savannah, Georgia. So you guys in Georgia have to prepare as well. But we all have to prepare because the tracking of these and let me see, my computer has been very slow, uh, and it usually is when we have these uh, horizon to horizon cloud coverings. And, well, it is slow. So, let's go back to that in a second. But Monster Florence aims to drench Carolinas as waves within Hurricane more than. 80 feet high, 80 feet high, doesn't matter if they're hyping this or exaggerating it. The point is, if they want to destroy this area with flooding, they're going to do it. They're equating this with Hurricane Katrina. And we don't have in South Carolina, in one of our largest counties, shelters strong enough to accommodate people in a safe way. Remember years ago, or decades ago, Cold War, shelters were all over the place. That threat of nuclear war, we had shelters all over the place. Where are those shelters now? Now we don't even have shelters on the coast of South Carolina um, able to handle a Category 4. Are you kidding me? Okay. Well, these are the things that beg questions, that should beg questions in everybody's mind. Why the hell doesn't a, 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 a county in South Carolina on the coast have a shelter, have shelters that can handle a Category 4. Recent engineering assessment recommended that every shelter in Charleston County, the third largest in the state, not be used for any storm above Category 3. 
So uh, there's no shelters available. Uh, what? Several schools have been identified as hurricane shelters, but the assessment completed in July, in July, found that none of those shelters could withstand winds above 130 miles per hour. So this deprives the county of shelter spots for 3,700 people. Please understand, please understand that this is deliberate. Let's see if we've gotten back to our models. No, site can't be reached. All right. The other was an international, um, oh, there it is. Okay. Well, just came right back. This one is a real mess. And this goes, you know, into, well, it engulfs all of South Carolina, Western North Carolina, Tennessee, Kentucky, Georgia, Alabama, and maybe a little bit into the Panhandle, and North Florida. So, uh, if this actually pans out the way, the way, um, I got the lawn mowing and the blowing going on, so I hope you don't hear it. Um, if this pans out the way mainstream media is speaking it, then we're in trouble. A whole lot of us are in trouble. This is North Carolina. What are all those dots? Well, those are all of your animal farms and waste sites. And Hurricane Florence may cause a toxic brew in North Carolina. This was 1999, Hurricane Floyd. Massive, massive death of chickens and pigs and hogs and other livestock. Well, it contaminated the water in North Carolina. So the heavy rain expected from Hurricane Florence could flog, could flood, I'm sorry, flood hog manure pits, coal ash dumps, and other industrial sites in North Carolina creating a noxious witch's brew of waste that might wash into homes and threaten drinking water supplies. Computer models predict more than three feet of rain in the eastern part of the state. It happened before, but before it was two feet of water in 1999, and that left Dozens of people dead, left whole towns underwater, residents st stranded on rooftops, and the bloated carcasses of hundreds of thousands of hogs, chickens, and other drowned livestock bobbed in a nose-stinging soup of fecal matter, pesticides, fertilizer, gasoline, so toxic that fish flopped helplessly on the surface to escape it, rescue workers had to put Vicks Vapor Rub under their noses to try to numb their senses. And you've got a whole lot of them all over and a whole lot right on the coast. So, uh, Jack Cruz, the director of the Center for the National, uh, for the Natural Hazards Research at East Carolina University said, the environmental impacts will be from concentrated animal feeding operations and coal ash pits. You're going to see a lot of junk in the water. North Carolina has roughly 2,100 industrial scale pork farms containing more than 9 million hogs. And they are on these grids that allow them to just urinate and crap all over. And this untreated sewage may very well, if it is three feet of water, well, you can forget about what your um, governor said. Raleigh, 
not finding water before Florence hits. Raleigh says, use your tap water. It's not part of the grid, so you'll have water. And they claim the water is safe. Well, if you have another a repeat of Floyd, and it will be Florence this time, your water won't be safe. I hope that you have a way to, you know, create um, that you have some portable gas stoves or whatever that you can boil water. I hope you have enough water, but unfortunately, um, well, a whole lot of people are fighting over food and water already. Could produce a disaster comparable to Hurricane Katrina. Extremely dangerous, monster, the worst in 60 years, the storm of a lifetime. So people in North Carolina, I'm sure this is happening uh, in South Carolina. Well, it was happening in upstate South Carolina. I walked into a supermarket last night. Well, I drove him, and I. it was hard to find a parking spot. All these people wiping the shelves clean. It's chaotic. Oh, my goodness, long lines. It's a mess in there. It's wiped out clean. The water aisles were especially bare. Empty shelf after empty shelf. We came around one, and all the water was gone. This is in North Carolina. Uh, now people are fighting for food. Other people are claiming there wasn't even any canned food left. Just months ago, disaster planners simulated a Category 4 hurricane strike alarmingly similar to now what is manifesting. Oh, so we had a simulated Category 4 just months ago, and now we're living the real thing. Great. Well, how often does that happen, that we have these... Um, Uh, God, I can't even think of the word. Drills. And then the real thing happens either on the day of the drill or uh, soon after. We've got problems with dams and we've got... We have so many nuclear reactors in South Carolina and North Carolina the dams, authorities in the U.S. Southeast, are checking dams and urging their owners to lower water levels ahead of Hurricane Florence, which is expected to unleash torrential rains, and test the thousands of dams in the region. In Virginia, you have 100 dams that are deemed concerning. And in the Carolinas, both states, a quarter of more than 8,000 dams are concerning. That's only 2,000. Don't worry. Don't worry. All of our authority figures are on it. But in Virginia, the ground is already saturated in parts of Virginia. We had flooding in Virginia in the past week just from the heavy rain. You guys in North Carolina, some areas have already been saturated with heavy, heavy rains. You're looking at a lot of trees coming down. Hurricane Florence, storm of a lifetime, shifts towards South Carolina as extreme threat. The storm's path shifted south and west, encompassing more of South Carolina and western North Carolina. All right. All I want to say is that you do, you know, regardless of many who are pointing out the lies coming out of mainstream media, Reporters, you still have to take this very seriously because, as I said, if they want to destroy this area, it will be destroyed. We've got so many trees that are so weak, they will topple over even with no rain uh, or uh, no wind. They'll topple over. If we get a lot of rain, they'll topple over with a little bit of wind. So take this seriously. And when they're saying the power outages could be 
for weeks, whether they whether they keep the power off or it really is legitimate, as legitimate as things can be, disasters can be today, because these trees have been hit with so much toxic uh, heavy metals and chemicals that they have been spraying that have been killing all of the trees. So I don't even claim that that's legitimate. Nothing is natural. So we have now an environment that is so unsafe. It's just our environment here on Earth has become unsafe for all of us to live. So we could be looking at an awful lot of damage. But don't worry, guys. The middle class is coming back strong. Yeah, middle class coming back really strong. Oh, the income. It hit an all-time high of 61372 last year. Donald Trump, he is a miracle worker. My God. The middle class is being destroyed. It is so destroyed. And it continues to get destroyed. So, you want to believe the lies? Go ahead. But why do I bring this up? Because there's an awful lot of people who have nowhere to go, who will not be able to survive any kind of uh, real destruction to their homes in South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, Georgia. They don't have the means to survive these disasters. And that's why I can't stand these lies about how strong the economy is and the middle class, oh, it's just now You're Donald Trump, that great miracle worker has just brought the middle class back up. Yeah, in his less than two years as president. It's an utter lie. They want you to believe that everybody is just fine. And more and more people every single day fall into the not fine category. And they're not surviving these disasters. And many become homeless. So yes, we have to change our ways. We have to change. Somehow we've got to change. And begin to really care about one another. And stop, and stop thinking that your government is going to fix everything. Your government is going to protect you. Your government is going to keep you safe. You've got dams, so many dams that are not <sighs> up to par. And you're looking at, in South Carolina, a coastal county that doesn't even have shelters that can withstand this storm. Somehow we've got to figure out a way to come together so that we can protect one another, keep one another safe, build one another up, keep, you know, community strong. I frankly think that that is just not possible for most Americans, but it's got to be said. Links are below. And I hope to God that all of my subscribers in this area are not going to have to suffer serious consequences of this, but I'm afraid. I am afraid for all of you. with this. Alright, do everything that you can to prepare as best you can.